Patients with Alzheimer's disease, or AD, develop amyloid deposits in the cerebral cortex and vasculature. These deposits contain aggregated, self-assembled forms of the beta amyloid, or A-beta, peptide, especially A-beta fibrils. Some form of self-assembled A-beta probably causes neurodegeneration in AD. Prior to the work described in this paper, no detailed molecular structural information was available for A-beta fibrils or other A-beta assemblies that actually develop in the human brain. My lab has studied the molecular structures of A-beta fibrils formed in vitro since 1998, primarily using solid-state nuclear magnetic resonance, or solid-state NMR, combined with electron microscopy and other measurements. One of our early findings was that A-beta fibrils are polymorphic at the molecular level, meaning that fibrils with different appearances in electron microscope images, such as the three fibrils in this image, have different internal molecular structures. So together with Steve Meredith of the University of Chicago, we began to wonder whether fibrils that actually develop in human brain tissue are as polymorphic as the fibrils we prepare in vitro, and whether fibrils that develop in the brain might exhibit structural variations that could correlate with variations in disease development. We cannot do solid-state animal measurements directly on A-beta fibers extracted from brain tissue because we need about 1 mg of fibers and because the fibers must be labeled with carbon-13 and nitrogen-15. However, we can use A-beta fibers in brain extract and seed for the growth of fibers from synthetic or recombinant A-beta peptides, which allow us to amplify fiber contagions and introduce isotopic labels. We first applied these protocols to tissue from a 72-year-old patient and obtained a quite beautiful solid-state animal spectrum, such as the two-dimensional carbon-carbon and carbon nitrogen spectra shown here. We were surprised to find that this spectra showed a single set of cross-peak signals for each isotopically labeled residue, indicating that a single 40 ribu A beta fiber structure developed in this patient's brain. Fibers derived from two different brain regions had nearly identical solid state animal spectra. A full structural model for brain derived A beta fibrils depends on a variety of measurements. From solid state NMR data, we find that the A beta peptide adopts a cotter pin like backbone conformation in the fibrils, and that A beta molecules line up in parallel along the fibril growth axis forming what's called an in-register parallel cross-beta motif. From dark field electron microscope images, we find that each fibril contains three cross-beta units with threefold rotational symmetry about the fibril growth axis. Additional solid-state NMR data provide information about amino acid side chain contacts and orientations. We would like to know whether different AD patients develop different A-beta structures in their brains. To start addressing this issue, we performed experiments with tissue from a second patient who died from AD at the age 80. As with patient 1, two-dimensional solid-state NMR spectra of 40 residue A-beta fibers from patient 2 show a single set of cross-peak signals with nearly identical spectra for fibers from three different brain regions. However, spectra of fibers from patient 2 are clearly different from spectra of the fibers from patient 1. Thus, the two patients apparently develop different A-beta fibrils in their brains. Interestingly, the two patients also had different clinic histories, while patient 2 exhibited classic Alzheimer's symptoms. The initial diagnosis for patient 1 was Lewy body dementia. This work has several implications. First, our observation that fibrils within brain tissue of a given patient are not polymorphic says something about mechanisms by which fibrils develop in the brain. A-beta fibrils that persist in AD brains may nucleate initially at a single site and then spread by active or passive processes of fragmentation, transport, and seeded growth. Second, our observation that two patients with different clinical histories developed different fiber structures suggests a possible correlation between fiber structure and the disease development. Finally, our observation that specific fiber structures developed in AD brains suggest that amyloid binding compounds for diagnostic imaging should target these specific fiber structures.